Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today I wanted to kind of go over some of the projects I've been messing around with in the garage here. Just kind of a spare time sort of thing. One thing I kind of like to do to pass time is make knives. And uh, it's been a while since I made one at this point. You see this one's starting to get a little bit of surface rust on her. But it should still be... Yeah, she's pretty aggressively sharp. Cutting hair pretty nice still. And uh, the whole jig I used was just the uh, the same one Aaron Go. I believe I'm not butchering his name there, but Aaron Go. He has a knife making channel on YouTube. Phenomenal, phenomenal instruction on how to build a, a knife uh, beveling jig to actually cut your bevels here. It takes for freaking ever, but it works. Uh, I've since gotten a belt sander, haven't really had time to screw with it. But one thing I really wanted to do was test out some new scowl making techniques. Previously, you can see I was using uh, natural hardwood. So this here is uh, like quilted maple burl, I think it's called. And it has a really nice kind of tiger eye look and, and a nice texture to it. I finished my handles with true oil, which is uh, commonly used for like rifle stocks and that sort of stuff. But I wanted to kind of get into a more polymer sort of... Uh, knife scale, knife handle. And that's where I started kind of messing around with these, which are actually uh, composite handles that I cast myself. I saw this guy on YouTube, I think, uh, or uh, Instagram rather, who, who sells these awesome, awesome knife scales, uh, but they're crazy expensive. So I kind of wanted to give it a shot making my own, and I think I replicated what he sells really, really nicely. So today I just kind of wanted to show you guys how I'm doing that and uh, and mess around with it. Now I have this, I have a couple knives here. So this is a nice Damascus blade that I purchased online. They're, they're pretty darn pricey to buy an actual good one. But uh, I think this is going to be what I end up putting some of these scales on. So I think that'll look pretty darn cool. Let's, uh, if I could line it up correctly here. Let's see. So you kind of get an idea of what that might look like once I actually get a scale on there. Pin it and I'll definitely have to epoxy the back. You can see here where I use these honeycomb aluminum structures. It uh, These things have a tendency to kind of push out. So once it's actually epoxied on the back, everything will be fully secured in there. But uh, let's go ahead and actually cast one of these suckers so you can see what goes into making one of these. I think it's pretty cool. A uh, bit of dicking around in the shop. So to actually make these knife scales, you're gonna need a few different materials. I kinda go for a red gold look. So I found these pigments on Amazon. Uh, they're called Pearl X. They're really popular with a lot of uh, guys who turn like pen blanks and that sort of stuff. They use this stuff for casting all the time. So I do the uh, Pearl X Super Russet and the Aztec Gold. In addition to that, the actual resin I'm pouring is a uh, Silmar 40, Silmar? Yeah, similar. <laughs> Silmar 41 clear casting polyester resin. Uh, there's probably better stuff out there. I didn't really research that a whole lot. I know a lot of guys use this stuff and it has a pretty good reputation. Uh, there's other, instead of polyester resins where you add the uh, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. It's actually an organic peroxide, so this is a small amount of MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, mixed into normal methyl ethyl ketone. Uh, otherwise, it would be a pretty powerful high explosive, actually. So I've, I've been told that if you shake this stuff and you kind of see bubbles frothing, that's how you know it's still good. I don't know quite how accurate that is, but... And they say if uh, if you shake it and it, the bubbles just go away, kind of like water or vodka, you know it's bad. Uh, so this is telling me, hopefully my catalyst here is still good. Now, <laughs> the uh, Silmar 41 I have here, apparently this stuff only has a shelf life of three months. I bought this all the way back in 2014. <laughs> Towards the end of 2014, but 2014 nonetheless. It is now 2018. So this stuff is well, well outside of its uh, intended use. <laughs> but 
I tested, I did a few test batches. It still cures perfectly fine. Haven't had any issues with that. So the last part here is this little nylon block that I made. I, I just bought a bunch of uh, nylon, I think it's half inch off uh, eBay for another project actually. And this stuff un unfortunately came in a bit cockeyed. It was pretty warped and the seller was doing the u usual eBay dickery and uh, refusing to send me a new piece without me paying for return shipping and all that bull. So I just figured, you know what, hell with it, I'll use it for a project at some point. And sure enough, I found this use for it. Had just enough material to make this little mold, but uh, it works like a charm. A couple other things I forgot to mention. Uh, this stuff here. This is aluminum honeycomb. <laughs> Check that out. That is some cool stuff. Uh, I would love to know what kind of process they used to make it. I've just been too lazy to Google it. But, I don't know, would it be some kind of extrusion or... Uh, shit like that's fascinating. But anyway, so what I'm going to do here is cut out a couple little pieces, pressing straight through it with a razor blade, piece by piece. So each little wall there, I'll kind of just do random patterns. Um, the only other thing you're going to need is some carnauba wax. I'm a car guy, so I always have a big jar of carnauba wax. I just put a little aside in this tiny jar here. Get it out. Um, there's tons of other mold release agents you can use too. People I know use uh, silicone sprays and all that sort of stuff. This is just kind of what I had around. and so The first thing I'm going to do is just cut some kind of random shapes out. It's a bit of a labor-intensive process, pain in the ass. I'll go in there nicely. So to mix the resin, we're gonna get this old bottle open, which is goddamn near impossible. God, struggle's real. There we go. Whew, victory. Oh, it smells like ass. By ass, I mean styrene monomer. So, I'm going for a second round with her here. And this time I figured why not try using some fresh catalyst, the MEKP, and uh, maybe pour the resin a little better, less air bubbles. I'm also going to mix a little slower. So, we're going to see how this all works out here. About six and a half, so we'll go to the eight. That means we need two and a half cc's with 1% MEKP. So I think the last uh, last pour there, we're probably well above that. Son of a bitch. I got Sir Hinges here. I forgot it was mail day yesterday. Sterile packed and everything. Sorry if I just got uncomfortably close to the microphone there. Alright, let's do this. So two and a half cc's. Gently pour it on like that. Fuck! Air bubbles. Okay, they, uh, they didn't penetrate. That one just hasn't popped yet. Some slimy stuff. You can see I already got my aluminum cut there. Most people who work with this stuff, the MEKP, don't realize. Methyl ethyl ketone peroxide is an extremely potent primary uh, explosive. It's, it's an organic peroxide. So, like pretty much all organic peroxides I can think of, it's a powerful explosive. That being said, it's extremely dilute, uh, so that you don't run into that problem too often. Or at all, I guess, at that dilution. It is a bit cold in the garage here today, too, so that might have an influence on it. But I am wearing my lucky short sweatshirt, so uh, my long gorilla arms. Apologize that you can see my fur there, but, you know, happens to the best of us. Alright, let's uh, 
get a bit poured in each cup here. Definitely still a good bit of air trapped in, in each of them, but what can you do? What can you do? That was my uh, Gerard Butler impression. Gonna be up for an Oscar at the end of the year. Uh, best YouTuber. So, you know. Don't forget to vote. Mixing in our pigment. This is where it's tricky to not get air bubbles and it's really tough to mix the pigment well without getting air bubbles. So I've already kind of screwed it a bit. I have a plan that I've used before with success so hopefully assuming the resin is still good and that's not the fault hopefully we'll have success this time. Alright, I'm just getting sloppy with the mixing at this point. My last popsicle stick, so we're being eco-friendly. That pigment does make some beautiful metallic colors. I would love to like see a car with that pigment. That would just be unreal. Like a swirl of the two of these. That would just be so cool looking on a vehicle. So to help our cause, this time around, I changed things up. I got the Makita and this horrific contraption. And uh, what that's going to do is act as a vibrator. Now, I know some of you might be saying, Bob, that isn't an optimal vibrator, this, that. Well, sorry guys, I'm not a vibrator expert. Some of, uh, some of those who seem to follow the page are, or channel are, but I'm, I'm not, so... All right, that's a fair bit of vibration. So, already got the mold prepped. I'm just gonna pop the aluminum pieces out. Aluminum for you British people. Mispronouncing it, aluminum. Psh, don't even, don't even know what that is. So the pigments this go around look a little bit lighter. Uh, I didn't add quite as much to the resin as before. We'll see how that looks. That should give a cool effect. Way more resin than I needed. Better to be in that boat though than the other. Let's give these a tap down. Alright, good. So they are just submerged. Which is what I'm looking for. That way we won't have to mill so much off. And now, let's show her our vibrator. Oh, my hand hurts. It's the most painful hand job I've ever had. Jeez. That's brutal. <laughs> Whoa. God. Tell your wife to get you a power drill for Christmas. She'll she'll freaking love you if you learn that trick. Holy crap. Can't even feel my fingers. Alright. Hopefully we brought all the bubbles to the surface there. I can still see some of them popping, but what I'm going to do is hit it with the heat gun, try to uh, help any of those bubbles that have come to the surface pop.
Cool. All right. Might give it one more hit with the vibrator. Oh God! It rattle trapped my uh, my mold right apart. <laughs> ha! Clamp failure. Son of a gun. All right. Well, let's try to remedy that a bit. That's a bummer. <laughs> the vibration rattled my uh, my clamp open. <laughs> Jesus. It never ends with this project. The first four or so of these I made went flawlessly as soon as I go to record it. Boom! With every problem known to man. Lost all feeling in my hands and forearms at this point. Some of them bubbles. It looks like the resin just from the vibrating there kind of intermixed nicely. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Funny, after you introduce the heat, you can really see it's almost like a uh, shockwave pro propagating through through the fluid. Really neat looking. It's almost like watching a slow mo video or like a lava lamp or something. It's just mesmerizing. All right, we're gonna let that one sit now before I screw it up further, and. Uh, We'll mill it, see how it turns out. Oh, we puckered one right out of there, but otherwise, looks pretty good. Turned out beautiful, no, no pockets of any sort, no little bit of chipping on the edge here, but I think that was from the earlier runs. So with just a little bit of sanding, this thing should clean up beautifully. Oh yeah. That's an awesome, awesome knife scale. That'll be gorgeous. Color that is just out of this world. So I'd need some cleaning up still, but man. Absolutely cool. <laughs> Love this stuff. I might actually just throw the back on the face mill for a minute just to get through that surface layer that's kind of not so bright. That looks great though really good so at this point I just hit it with you know 800 grit 2000 grit maybe 3000 grit if I'm feeling extra special that day then some plastic polish and you're done it's ready to go on a knife I mean hell if if you're not selling these directly to a knife maker and you're using them yourself you might as well just leave them rough epoxy them on your uh, on your knife handle Pin them up and then, uh, you know, let your, your glue cure there, your epoxy cure, and then rough them to shape. That's when you, when you bring out the good stuff. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not doing your finish until later, there's no sense in, in rushing it now. And it'll be nice to show off. Say, hey, look at this beautiful knife scale I made. I'm going to, that would even make a sweet scale for, my 1911 or something like that, that would just be gorgeous. Oh my god. That'll make somebody smile though. <laughs> Beautiful. So that's all there is to it. If you want to make some awesome homemade knife scales, uh, I actually had ended up ordering this clear cast. A lot of people rave about this stuff. They say it's great for doing this exact kind of work. 
and it's a little easier uh, you don't have to mix the catalyst and all that you just have two part epoxy it's a two to one ratio there's less that can go wrong than with a uh, an oxidizer or a organic peroxide based uh, catalyzing resin there like the uh, Silmar 41 is so I'll leave a link to both of those if I don't know I think you can find the Silmar 41 on eBay I know this one's on Amazon uh, at least I'm pretty sure I got that on Amazon <laughs> and uh, the honeycomb I'm not really sure where the heck to get that someone probably sells it on eBay or Amazon if I can find it I'll leave you guys a link and uh, just get yourself an exacto blade and you'll be off and running I guess you gotta make the mold too you can make your own mold or uh, this was a mold I received some time ago I forget no idea who makes it it was just a little too big and not long enough so I never ended up using this mold but you could easily use a generic off-the-shelf mold like this too to make your blanks and it would be no problem you might just use a little more resin but if you're doing thin knives the cool thing is you could uh, pour one blank cut it down the middle and there you go you have your uh, your two knife scales in one shot one pour so that'd be pretty nice there as well or you could pour thicker and uh, possibly book match them I don't know how this would cut through a bandsaw I've never cut it through a bandsaw but that would look pretty darn cool if you had butch book matched sets well guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video it uh, may have went on a little longer than I wanted I ended up running through the whole process twice so but we ended up ma making a beautiful knife scale in the end and uh, I hope you guys maybe learned something and hope you uh, hope you want to try it on your own it's a fun project and if if you're into knife making it is really cool to be able to make this sort of stuff yourself you, to not just make the knife but to make the knife scale and just to have a beautiful one-of-a-kind handle is in my opinion pretty awesome so thank you so much for watching hope you guys have a good one take it easy